Suddenly, the majestic form of a wild creature caught Phoenix's eye. If Phoenix wanted to tame the beautiful beast, the mortal would have to befriend it first. Why are you whispering? Because I don't want to scare it away. What are you on? Because can I have some? The sight of the Great Hall took Phoenix's breath away. This is... incredible! It's alright. Could use some updating. The color motif is a bit played out. So... 
We're safe here. Remember that thing I stole from Typhon? It was an itty-bitty piece of his eye to hide this place from his terrifying gaze. You're welcome. You said this is the Hall of the Gods. Well, where are the others? Let me start from the beginning. With his hand on Phoenix's shoulder, Hermes recounted the tale of Typhon, destroyer of gods. Typhon, born of Gaia, was a terrible, cruel beast who vowed to free the Titans and obliterate the gods. He challenged Zeus for the rule of the cosmos. Fortunately, Typhon was the Damn straight he was! And imprisoned under a mountain, where he could do no more harm. I got to get back into that kind of shape again. For thousands of years, Typhon festered. Until Helios was eclipsed, and burning stars fell from the heavens. The stars burnt through Typhon's chain, and in an explosion of fire and smoke, Typhon burst from the mountain. The gods had wronged and tortured him. Never again! He vowed. This world will be cleansed. The gods will pay! And so, Typhon sought his revenge. Destroy the veil that separates this hallowed land from the underworld! Let Tartarus walk among the gods! Trouble, devour, and turn these life-fault gods to dust! Come, Olympians! Brandish your weapons and face me! You have underestimated my power and world in your hubris! Go to my unseatable perfection! Some gods fled in fear. Others stayed to fight. Many were captured. Typhon split them apart, cleaving their essences from them and transforming them irrevocably. In a final, desperate attempt to save their lands, the gods called on the heroes of old, the last warriors who had more than a few drops of god's blood remaining in their veins. <laughs> Weak and selfish, your heroes will exist as shadows of their former selves, serving me forever! The gods had failed, and so had the heroes. But just when all hope seemed lost... So yeah, a lot of fighting and losing. And now you are our only remaining hope to restore these lands to their former glory and save the world from chaos. All we have, Phoenix, is you. No pressure. I kind of lost track of who's who. Is that one with the spiky hair you or Typhon? Forget it. The vanquished gods need to be reunited with their severed essences to regain their power. Then, together, you must defeat Typhon. This is honestly a lot. I wish my brother was here. Look, kid, I'm not perfect. I'm the guy who escorted Pandora to Earth for Zeus's sake. But maybe, just maybe, you're the right hero at the right time. Also, you're literally all we've got, seeing as how everyone else has been defeated. Good luck. I'll be right here, doing nothing. <clears throat> I mean, beginning preparations. Thanks. I think. Oh, there's that face again. Fine. Your best starting point is to reach the top of the other statues on the Golden Isle, so you can track the missing gods. Find them, and they should be able to help you locate their stolen essences. Although... they haven't been themselves, so I'm really not sure. Um... what's that mean? 
Guess you'll find out. Phoenix Thick. What would my brother do? Oh! Is this Hephaestus' forge? You're cute. Try not to impale yourself on anything. But Phoenix wasn't listening. She was drawn to the forge by a hidden force, the Aramantine she'd gathered, calling out to be reshaped.
Phoenix stumbled upon a winged creature, easily mistaken for a fairy. As Phoenix freed the small creature imprisoned on the isle, she let out a cry, which meant, great hero, I am but a piece of Nike, the goddess of victory. Please free the others, so I may return to my full glory. They won't win without Nike. She's like a glove or a, a thing you wear that protects you while running. A helmet. So, what is it? Phoenix would need to free it to find out. Yeah, but you can tell me now. Can you please respect my narrative pacing? the Valley of Eternal Spring. Its highlights include a massive tree that reaches up to the heavens. The Hall of the Gods. Eros's palace. Oh, I'm glad he finally got his happy ending. And a palace belonging to the goddess of beauty herself. Of course, Aphrodite would claim the prime real estate with the best view. As long as she's safe from prying eyes, I'm happy. From such great heights, a fluttering of birds, feeding from the most beautiful apple tree, caught Phoenix's eye. Phoenix was about as high as I was when I thought marrying Aphrodite off to Hephaestus would stop the other gods from fighting over her. Yes, that view from Mount Olympus is something else. I haven't seen it in years. You're not getting that high again, so stop asking!
wouldn't happen to be Aphrodite? Why, yes, I am. Pleasure to humbly make your acquaintance. Phoenix, uh, sorry, I'm just such a fan. You're responsible for some of the most epic love stories of all time. I have to admit, I wasn't expecting a tree, but even in your, uh, arboreal state, you're beautiful. Oh, that's sweet of you to say, but the only mirror I gaze into these days reflects the happy smiles of the creatures I help. Oh, if only I could travel to those most in need. But, alas, my roots keep me anchored here. So that's why Typhon did this to you. So you can't use your beauty to move ships or inspire bravery in battle against him. Me? Start a war? I don't know where you get such outlandish ideas. True beauty is found in acts of service. True love is the giving of yourself to others. The name Aphrodite should have stood for those things all along. She did not just say that. I am reformed now. My own essence locked away in a vault wedged under my largest root, <laughs> which is for the best. Maybe I could get that essence back for you. I'm going to need allies to go up against Typhon. We have the hungry to think about. You said you need to free yourself from your roots. To feed the hungry, of course. Well, my roots were as a pretty bad farmer. So I know how to hurt plants. Salt. It shriveled them up. Oh, would that work? But of course, my roots are not ordinary. They're primal. Powerful. So we'll need, a uh, mythical salt water? Oh. Oh! This is in the prophecy! A pearl in rough seas! You were a pearl born from rough seas! The salty sea foam from your birth! Yes! What an inspired proposal! But I couldn't possibly trouble a stranger to recreate the conditions of my birth. What if a stranger asked to be troubled? If a stranger asked to be troubled, then... I suppose I wouldn't really be troubling them at all. Here's how to conjure seafoam from my birthplace. I already know all about this. Mom loved this story. Grandpappy Uranus threw a pearl into the sea. The sea churned into foam, and Aphrodite rose up out of it. A pearl? Grandpappy? I'm not sure that's how it... That's definitely the story. Okay. I'm sure that's how it went, uh, down. Got it. Knock a pearl into the ocean really hard. That sounds simple enough. Oh, thank you, Phoenix. I'll be serving fresh apples to the less fortunate across the Golden Isle in no time. Well, this is weirder than the time Demeter turned that kid into a lizard. Aphrodite, sweet and charitable. No more mischief? Isn't that what you were aiming for when you married her off to Hephaestus against her will? Hey now, it wasn't. I mean, she knew I was doing it for her own good.
Locked all the Cyclopes away with the other Titans, huh? Yes. He was afraid they'd overthrow him. There was a prophecy. Bored. Grandpa made the right call. Those things are an eyesore. <laughs> Get it? Uh, the birth of Aphrodite is a gruesome tale. Nothing gruesome about it. Grandpa Uranus and my deadbeat dad, Kronos, had a battle so great it severed heaven from Earth. That's not all that was severed. During his surprise attack, Kronos descended on Uranus. When Earth was severed from heaven, there was a great earthquake that knocked a pearl loose from its oyster. Hang on, there was no... <laughs> the pearl flew from its oyster on land, and Uranus caught it and flung it out to sea with such a force that it caused the frothy foam to bubble.
From the sea foam, Aphrodite rose, full grown, beautiful as that same pearl. I can't take this anymore. Zeus, Gaia lied to you about how Aphrodite was born. Oh, yeah? Then tell me how it really happened. And Kronos, they fought. You can't be serious. And I can't believe this fell into the sea. That's. Because Kronos cut off his... <gasps> You're sick, Prometheus! Do not talk to me! With the sea foam secure... Ah... Phoenix resolved to return to Aphrodite with the key to her freedom and the vault.
fighting.
You've returned, you sweet creature. <gasps> Do you have the sea foam? Right here. Oh, aren't you good? Please, take my blessing for all your hard work. Now quick, pour the foam on my roots. The sooner I can move, the sooner I can expand my apple care. Did it work? Coming out of the foam, I was so <gasps> fabulous. No, there's too many cuddly creatures that need my help. It keeps me awake at night, just seeing their little beaks and bright eyes. And those noses, those quivering wet noses. <gasps> Ah! <laughs> 
just happened? Typhon must not like you. Though, I couldn't possibly imagine why. Whenever anyone defies him, he sends one of his raids. And that raid delegates responsibility, as raids tend to do, to shades. So the warrior that just appeared wasn't really Achilles? Goodness, no! The true Achilles is far more dashing. Oh, you're telling me. He's hiding in a lair nearby. Until he's defeated, his shades will reappear on this part of the island. Is there ever any good news? Well, the sea foam worked and uh, I'm able to move my roots. One of them was actually blocking Achilles' lair. I can't help but the other three raids, though. Heracles, Atalanta, and Odysseus. Oh, you know what they say. Bad things come in fours. No one says that. No one says that! Tough crowd. What about the root blocking your essence? It's just that some people I care about have been turned into stone. So I'm quite keen to- Nope. Nope. Uh, for some reason, that root is still firmly in place. Uh, thank you for your concern. But what matters is I can start delivering apples. All the animals will be fed in no time. Let's get to it. Thank you kindly for all your help. Many happy returns. But I... That was strange. I can't keep standing idly by. Sorry, I mean busily preparing anymore. You have to bring Aphrodite back to her beautiful snarky self before I go crazy. By the gods, where did you come from? Behind you? Does it matter? Don't worry about me. Focus on finding another way to shrivel that root. So what? Saltier, more mythical water? Actually, wait. What about Aphrodite's tears? Didn't she cry at the death of Adonis? They'd be salty and powerful. You really know your stories, kid. Her tears just might work. If you put them directly on the root, blocking off her essence. Now, where did Typhon hide them? You should search the vaults of Tartarus nearby. There are three crystallized tears. All right. We have a plan, then. Please hurry. Until Aphrodite is back to herself, who will I talk to about whatever this is that you're wearing? What's wrong with what I'm wearing? And he's gone.